Hi all, we're going to go back to basics again and do a deep dive into the gusset command which you will find in the punch group at the bottom unless you've moved it within your UI. So I'm just going to run that and I'm going to reset so we start from scratch here. I've got a very simple part on screen, a tab and a flange just to create a bend between these two planar faces and we'll have a look and see what the gusset does for us. So we have two types. I'm going to go through each one in turn, automatic profile. We select a bend face. Very simple, we select the face of a bend. We now specify the location. I'm just going to pick up on this datum plane and it creates the gusset feature on the bend. Simple as that. So let's have a look at a little bit more detail on what we can do here. I'm actually going to zero some of these values out so we can actually look at the form in its, uh, in its entirety here. So let's starting with the different options here. I'm going to turn on the legend so we can see which parameter refers to which. And starting with the depth, the depth, if I just rotate it through here from the top surface of the gusset to the outside of the bend radius, is the depth. So in this particular case this is 10 millimeters. We've got two forms. We've got a square form and I'm just going to zero the side angle as well so we can see. So we've got a zip, we've got a square form of a given width. Let's just make that 15 just to make it pretty obvious. We've got a, a square profile and we've got a round form which of course creates a round form. Okay, so let's now go and investigate some of the others. You can see in the legend between square and round, the profile changes. And uh, as we go through here, let's put the width back to eight or 10. It's a little bit less here. And let's look at the side angle. So the side angle of these side faces here, if I put in 45 degree, you can see We've got a 45 degree on each side, and that's the angle from the vertical, so it's 45 each side. So in this particular case, I've got 90 between the two faces. Quite simple there. Reduce that to say 30. And then the punch radius, the punch side is the radius defined on the inside, i.e. the punch side of the feature. So if I make that 3, we can see that these radii on this side are set to three and the ones on these are automatically calculated based on the material thickness. Die radius com conversely this edge round here which you can see no radius at all if I make that three we can see that we've got a three millimeter radius there and the resultant radius based on material thickness on the other side. And that's uh, an automatic profile gusset um, we can change the depth of this down to pretty well much twice the material thickness. If I just change that to round, we can go fairly small here. Depth is 6, let's go down to 5. We can go below twice the material thickness and just have a very small notch in the feature. If I go down a little bit smaller, okay, we can't apply this because of the die radius uh, and there's some some values here that we would need to change but you see there the intent here let's now switch across to an automatic profile gusset again in the punch group we select gusset and we change to user defined profile so here we've got the same legend the same options in terms of form but you'll see there's no depth value let me just switch back to automatic this depth value is now controlled by a sketch. And the way this works is we need to sketch a section. So I'm going to pick a curve. So one edge of the bend radius here is fine. And we define its position, the position for the gusset, as a percentage of arc length or through a point uh, or of an arc length. I'm just going to do this as a 50% so it's in the middle. Um, we can define the orientation and so on. I've now got my point here and I can sketch. Now I can sketch a line literally disconnected for any other 
surrounding geometry and say finish and it will project the gusset. Now of course there's not a lot of point in just doing a 45 degree line because I've got the automatic profile for that. So where does the user defined profile come in? Maybe I want to create a gusset which has a offset angle which I can do. Maybe I want to create a gusset which is non-linear so I can define a profile shape. Of course you may want to add dimensions for each one of these. So I can do a curve and then finally I can do something similar to let's say a profile which looks something like this and I'll put a fillet on there as well. So we've got quite a lot of uh, capability there. It doesn't like some of the parameters on that one. Let's just take some of these away. If you really get stuck, just zero the punch and radius. Cannot create, try changing the input values. So let's go back here and pull this out a little bit further. There we go, so we've now got a profile. So I can put some of these values back in now as it's behaving itself, I, I can do a... Okay, so it's the die radius it's not very happy with here. Can't do the die radius and that's probably due to the width based on the profile. So if I make this a wider, a wider profile and put in a small die radius, there we go, we can see that's now working. So a lot of scope and capability there. One other thing you may have noticed on user defined profile, we can define the position of the gusset based on the sketch, either side one, side two, or symmetric. And then finally down the bottom, we have alternate solution. Now it really depends on the sketch geometry that you're putting together. There may be a situation where there's another solution to your gusset. So you just click through the different options and see. In my situation here, there's no other options. Uh, so it's fairly straightforward. So some important extra things to think about when using the gusset command. If I want to unbend my part, you'll notice an alert, an information alert that says, gussets will be removed by unbend. If possible, consider reordering the features. So let's say I'm going to unbend this to do some cutout in the flat and then rebend. So what you'll see is that the unbend has a warning on it and it's removed the gusset, but the gusset profile is still shown in the flat form. I can now carry on and do whatever operation it was that I was going to do. Let's just say I'm going to cut out some material from this side and I'm going to rebend back up again. My gusset is still there in the tree. I've done my unbend, my operation and my rebend. I just grab this gusset and I pull it after the flattening, the unbend and the rebend and uh, we're back to normal. So hopefully that helps.